We've already seen the six and eight core Zen 5 parts. Now it is time to check out AMD's most powerful desktop offering, the new Ryzen 9 9950X. And I don't have a box or anything. AMD didn't provide a retail box. So the, the CPUs on the system, just pretend I've got a 9950X here and you'll see the B-roll soon. Now, as usual, we will be reviewing this from the perspective of a PC enthusiast, covering general desktop tasks, as well as some stuff like video editing and 3D modeling. But of course, the focus here will be on gaming. I think it's fair to say that the dual CCD Ryzen CPUs have never been the outright best options for gamers, but they have been the best options for those of you who like to work and play without having to invest in two different systems to tackle each of those tasks. In a perfect world, you have one CCD that clocks as high as possible, delivering strong gaming performance, and I suppose lightly threaded application performance, with a second CCD that acts as a bit of backup for those core heavy productivity workloads. Sadly though, it doesn't always work like that, and dual CC designs can often end up hurting gaming performance and even lightly threaded productivity workloads. Still, it is a cost effective solution, and as I said, for those of you who like to work and play, Previous Gen 12 and 16 core Ryzen processors have been a godsend. Now, in the case of these new Zen 5 CPUs, the improvements over Zen 4 have generally been very small for desktop users, especially those of you keen on gaming performance. For example, the 9700X was just 3% faster than the 7700X in our testing, whereas the 7700X was 21% faster than the 5800X in its day one review two years ago. And prior to that, the 5800X was 23% faster than the 3700X. So that means gamers have become quite accustomed to new Ryzen processors boosting gaming performance by at least 20% over the previous generation parts, making Zen 5's sub 5% uplift seriously disappointing. And this was a real blow for the 6-core 9600X and 8-core 9700X, because outside of gaming, those lower core count CPUs generally aren't super useful for core heavy tasks like video editing, for example, because for those sort of tasks, you'd ideally go with a 12 or 16 core model, assuming that you can afford them, that is. So all of this might be good news for the 9950X, as it's a 16 core 32 thread design, making it very useful for productivity tasks. But I guess the question is, how much more useful than the 7950X? When compared to the 7950X, the core count remains the same at 16, and both parts boost to the same 5.7 GHz, though the base frequency of the 9950X has dropped by 200 MHz. Both models feature 32 MB of L3 cache per CCD, for a total of 64 MB, and both have a 170 Watt TDP. So a real quick side-by-side -side comparison of the hardware specs doesn't really reveal anything, as the changes to the 9950X have been made at an architectural level. AMD says that the Zen 5 architecture boosts substantial improvements to energy efficiency, performance, and AVX 512 slash VNNI computational capabilities for machine learning and AI workloads. So that all sounds pretty exciting for us desktop users. So that's Zen 5 in a nutshell. AMD has targeted server workloads and development software, not general desktop computing and gaming, which is why there are no real gains here. Still, AMD's review guide is claiming that the 9950X is on average 8% faster than the 7950X for gaming, and they also claimed during their tech day in an official slide that the 12-core 9900X provides gaming leadership over Intel's Core i9-14900K for gaming, offering on average 12% better performance than the i9 processor. That is a wild claim. So keeping all of that in mind, let's go over the benchmarks, starting with some productivity tests before we jump into the gaming results. The Cinebench multi-core score of the 9950X is impressive, hitting 2,286 points, though that is just a 4% improvement over the 7950X at the same TDP. With the CPU power capped at 165 watts, the cores on CCD1 averaged 5.2 GHz, and the cores on CCD2 ran at 4.9 GHz. This resulted in a peak temperature of 92 degrees and an average operating temperature of 82 degrees during our 30 minute test. And with just a single core active, the CPU power hit 31 watts and we saw a maximum operating frequency of 5.7 gigahertz and an operating temperature of 64 degrees. Now, if we look at power draw from the EPS 12 volt rails, we see that the 9950X consumed the same level of power as the 7950X. So in this example, you're looking at a 4% performance boost at the same power and I don't reckon that's gonna blow your socks off. 
The 9950X does look impressive when measuring single core performance in Cinebench, as here we're able to match the Core i9-14900K, making it 11% faster than the 7950X, so that's pretty good. Unfortunately though, what isn't good is the 7-zip file manager compression performance. Here the 9950X is actually 5% slower than the 7950X, so that's pretty bad. You never want to see a performance regression with a new generation. The decompression performance wasn't quite as bad, but even so, the 9950X was still 2.5% slower than the 7950X, so a highly disappointing result overall. The 9950X was faster in the Blender Open Data Benchmark, though it did only offer a 5% boost here. And while that does make it the fastest desktop CPU for this test, which again is impressive, but also it's just a mere 5% faster than the 7950X at the same power level, so it's not exactly amazing in that sense. The 9950X produces the best result in the Corona 10 benchmark, beating the 7950X by an impressive 14% margin, and incredibly, that meant it was also 26% faster than Intel's Core i9-14900K. So a great result here, and I really wish we saw more of this from AMD's Zen 5 range on the desktop. Moving on to Photoshop, we find the typical 5% uplift for the 9950X over the 7950X. And don't get me wrong, performance overall was excellent from the 9950X, but just a 5% generational improvement here is pretty weak, I think, to say the least. Things look even worse in Premiere Pro, which is disappointing for someone like me who basically lives in this application. The 9950X is offering a mere 2% uplift, meaning it's still quite a bit slower than the 14900K. Not that we're recommending Intel's 13th or 14th gen k skew parts right now, but still that's a disappointing result. Okay, so time for the gaming benchmarks. And while the 9950X might not be a gaming focused product, we are a gaming focused channel. So obviously we're gonna look at gaming performance. Starting with Baldur's Gate 3, we see that the 9950X is offering 7950X performance, as in performance overall goes unchanged here. Despite that, the 9950X still consumed 8% more power than the 7950X in Baldur's Gate 3 to deliver the same performance. So in this example, Zen 5 isn't as efficient as Zen 4. And disappointingly, the 9950X was 3% slower than the 7950X in The Last of Us Part 1, dropping from 187 FPS to 182 FPS. It's a negligible difference, but also super disappointing to see a performance regression. We also see that despite being slower, the 9950X consumed 6% more power than the 7950X in The Last of Us Part 1. Here we see that the 9950X was faster in Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, so that's something. It was only 1% faster, but at this point I think we're going to take it. Sadly though, the 9950X did again consume more power, sucking down 5% more than the 7950X. Testing with Hogwarts Legacy saw the 9950X pull out a 4% lead over the 7950X, and I was almost lulled into calling that an impressive gain. But we all know it's not, so let's just move on. Here I found what is actually an impressive gain in ACC, where the 9950X is offering an 11% boost over the 7950X. Now you might have expected this to be more of the norm for Zen 5, but sadly gaming results like this are actually outliers. The 9950X also looks decent in Spider-Man Remastered, beating the 7950X by a 7% margin allowing it to deliver similar performance to that of the 7800X 3D. So that's impressive. It's still only a 7% increase over its predecessor, but given what we've seen so far, that's certainly one of the better results. Unfortunately, the Homeworld 3 performance goes unchanged. So that is to say the 9950X equals the 7950X here. The 7950X was faster in a Plague Tale Requiem, though we're only seeing a 4% gain in this example. So not something you're actually going to notice. We're not seeing a performance improvement in Counter-Strike 2. The 9950X was technically slower than the 7950X here, though we're only talking about a 1% margin. So this is another example where these two CPUs are so similar in terms of gaming performance that it would be impossible to tell them apart. As we found previously with the 9700X and 9600X, Zen 5 sucks in Starfield. And this remains true with the 9950X, which was 7% slower than the 7950X. And it's the same story in Horizon Forbidden West, the 9950X is nowhere here, trailing the 7950X by an 8% margin. So there's really not much more to say about this other than it's obviously a very disappointing result. 
Performance in Hitman 3 is basically the same as the 9950X is just a percent faster than the 7950X. So this is another one that we can just mark down as a tie. And finally, we have Watch Dogs Legion. And here the 9950X is a percent slower than the 7950X. So another tie in this example. So that means across the 13 games tested, the 9950X is almost a percent faster than the 7950X. Well, I suppose let's just round it up and give it that 1% win. That doesn't exactly make for exciting gaming gains. After two years, you're getting the same thing. And for gamers, that is Zen 5 in a nutshell. Now, just quickly, with PBO, the CPU package power peaked at 230 watts, and the CPU was thermally throttling at the 95 degree TJ Maxx, though our motherboard did report a peak CCD1 temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. And this allowed the cores on CCD1 to run at 5.3 gigahertz, and the cores on CCD2 to hit 5 gigahertz. So with PBO enabled, we are temperature limited with the 9950X, and I should note we're using a Be Quiet Pure Loop 2 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler for all of this testing. The results are no doubt going to vary, but for this configuration, we were only able to squeeze out an additional 2% performance from the 9950X with PBO enabled. As is always the case with overclocking features, PBO kills the power efficiency of the 9950X, and that 2% performance boost came at a 15% increase to power. Increasing the power budget does nothing for single core performance as the CPU isn't limited by power under these conditions. That being the case, we don't see an uplift in games. For example, the 9950X was just a percent faster in Starfield with PBO enabled. We're also looking at just a percent improvement in Hitman 3. Again, that is with PBO enabled. And it's the same story in Horizon Forbidden West, just a 1% uplift with PBO enabled, so PBO does nothing for gaming performance, and we saw this with the 9600X and 9700X as well. So, end of story really. Here's a quick look at the cost per frame when only accounting for the price of the CPU. The 9950X ends up costing 24% more than the 7950X, based on the current market prices, it's also 30% more than the 7950X 3D. So obviously just buy that part if you want a 16 core Ryzen processor for work and play. Even when factoring in a decent motherboard and 32 gigabyte memory kit for a platform upgrade, the 9950X ends up costing 17% more per frame than the 7950X and 23% more than the 7950X 3D. It's ridiculous in my opinion that AMD in an official capacity claimed that the 9900X provides gaming leadership over Intel's Core i9-14900K, and by a 12% margin on average no less. And if true, the 9950X, well that should be a little bit faster again, or at the very least as fast as the 9900X for gaming. Yet in reality, the 9950X is 6% slower than the 14900K, across the 13 games that we tested. The 14900K is the world's second fastest gaming processor, and of course it is second only to the 7800X 3D, and in fact the 3D vCache part is just 6% faster on average when compared to the i9. So if the 9950X was indeed upwards of 10% faster than the i9 for gaming, it would actually beat the 7800X 3D. So these are clearly garbage claims from AMD. Now you might be thinking, what's the big deal here? These companies always lie in first party benchmarks. And be that as it may, what AMD has done here is set these Zen 5 desktop CPUs up to fail and in spectacular fashion. But even if we ignore all of the marketing mistakes made by AMD here and just evaluate the 9950X on its own merit, it's hard to conclude that this release is anything but a huge disappointment. For the gaming side of things, the 9950X is offering 7950X performance, which is good performance overall, but it's also performance you could have purchased any time in the last two years. The 9950X only uses slightly more power than the 7950X when gaming, so there are no efficiency improvements to be made here in terms of gaming performance. So from a gaming perspective, the 9950X is a complete and utter flop. Now, for general desktop usage, the 9950X, it's not offering a whole lot. We saw a performance regression for compression and decompression workloads, only a very minor performance improvement in Cinebench and Blender, a small improvement for image editing and Photoshop, and a tiny improvement for video editing and Premiere. 
The only substantial gain we saw was in the Corona 10 benchmark, and while it was a nice 14% performance uplift, this is the only example we can point to. The rest of the productivity data was extremely underwhelming. Now, you could complain about the applications we use to evaluate the performance of the 9950X, but before doing so, it is worth noting that the 7950X is 102% faster than the 5950X in the 7-zip compression test, and 29% faster for decompression. It's 51% faster in Blender, 52% faster in Cinebench, 59% faster in Corona, 35% faster in Photoshop, and 34% faster in Premiere. That means, on average, across our productivity benchmarks, the 7950X is 52% faster than the 5950X. Meanwhile, the 9950X was on average just 3% faster than the 7950X. Yep, 3%, let that sink in. And it's the same thing for gaming. The 7950X was on average 32% faster than the 5950X, yet the 9950X is just shy of a percent faster than the 7950X. I called the 9700X a flop, the 9600X a disaster, and my feelings about the 9950X, they really aren't that much different. The 9950X is also a bit of a pain to live with because of that dual core complex die design. Upgrading to this chip, it won't be a straightforward process, at least not as straightforward as you think. You just can't copy a Windows install over. So let's say you have a Ryzen 5 7600, you can't just upgrade to a 9950X, keep your Windows install as it is, even if you install the new chipset driver, chances are you will be losing a lot of performance doing so. And the same is true when even going from Zen 4 uh, dual CCD models as well. So you do risk losing quite a bit of performance if you don't do a fresh install. And I've also noticed that dual CCD performance can degrade over time, requiring a fresh Windows install to restore that original performance. There's probably other ways of going about it, but that is certainly the easiest way that I've come across so far. This is a real pain, obviously, and not something you have to worry about with the single CCD models, even those with 3D vCache. Just install the AM5 chipset driver and you're away. There's really not much more to say here. The 9950X has fared no better than the 9600X and 9700X in our reviews. So if you're in the market for a core heavy AM5 processor, I recommend picking up either the 7950X 3D for $530 US, that's a pretty great buy now, or the 7900X 3D for $400 US. And that is going to do it for this review of AMD's Ryzen 9 9950X. Um, let me know what you think about the 9950X in the comment section below. We will have the 9900X coming up shortly. Um, be surprised if that's faster at all than a 14900K, but we'll find out shortly. Uh, yeah, like the video, subscribe, do the YouTube stuff. We have Floatplane Patreon if you want to sign up to either one of those and get a bit more hardware unboxed access, uh, access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, behind the scenes content and Q&A stuff. Check that out if you're interested. But if not, that's perfectly fine. And of course, I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.